Hi, so in a previous video, making bellows um, tape and pattern method, I think, we made a couple of bellows. Now, bellows uh, are actually really quite astounding things. So I made this. Now, it's obviously an air engine. Now, we've made a bellows air engine before, but we made it from this stuff, which is the concertina you can buy for your um, dryer or your AC or something like that. And we tried to give it a go just by breathing into it, and of course it didn't work. Now, this thing is actually set up for a vacuum because I tend to put it on the vacuum cleaner. But what I really wanted to show you was this. <laughs> I mean, I'm actually just breathing in. So I'm breathing in and able to turn this engine just with the power of my breath. I think that's really awesome. Now, I'm absolutely fascinated by lots of cheap sources of low power because to my mind lots of cheap sources of low power add up to one big old expensive power source so I'm interested in scavenging energy now you can make air engines on compressed air and uh, they're actually really good um, but you have to compress the air and if we can find some way of having uh, a machine that will run on very low air compression like breathing in or breathing out then we're on to a winner according to me so just by breathing in, I can run this thing. That, sorry, dust. That is awesome to me because it doesn't take me much to do it. Now you swap the, um, more dust. Now you, you swap the pipes over for it to operate on air blowing in. But I'm going to run it on the vacuum cleaner in a minute so you can see how well it actually runs because it runs really well. But you've got to ask yourself, what's the difference here in this machine and the other bellows machine that we made? Well, this concertina bellows, if I do that with it and put it down, it will begin to contract, but not by very much. Now I have another one of our bellows right here, and if I take the bellows and press it down, see that? I mean, I'm sure that that's not sort of astounding in itself. But one way of looking at these kind of bellows, which is why we can actually do that just by breathing, is these bellows are in fact a piston with a spring. So that's what they are. Now, if you remember Tesla and his earthquake machine, he burbled on about pistons and springs uh, for ages, really. It was a key thing to him. Because if you have a piston and a spring, you can set up an oscillating system, just like a swing. You take a bit of energy, push it, but you don't need that much more energy to continue pushing it. So it's the same thing here. When we're breathing in, these bellows are acting like a spring, and it will run just because I can um, breathe in, because of the aid of the piston and spring, which is what these bellows actually are. Now, I find that a fascinating concept, because we're not just looking at a bellows, remember, we're actually looking at a piston and a spring. What else could we do with that? Well, you've got to think about Stirling engines, obviously. Now, this thing was incredibly cheap to make. We're talking about tape and a piece of paper. And, of course, it didn't take much skill, so the machining requirement is absolutely infinitesimal. So the way of building this thing, actually, would be really, really cheap. And that's got to have everybody's imagination going. I mean, I put it on this um, because I quite like the look of it, to be honest. Uh, it does need rebuilding. It's a bit ropey, so, but I do like it with the exception of the valve. And I'll show you the valve in a close-up in a minute so you can have a look at that because I quite like the valve. But we did use this valve, remember, in another video, which just flips backwards and forwards. It's an oscillating valve. So if we got rid of all this gubbins, just had this in our oscillating valve, you're talking about an engine that would cost pennies to actually produce. Really, mass producing something like that out of paper, you can do it in paper and timber, um, would be insignificant. Anyway, let's have a close-up look at the valve. So here's a close-up of the valve. So what it is, really, is a piece of 22mm copper pipe, or three-quarter of an inch, held in some Munson rings, are soldered onto a brass bar, so I can screw that brass bar onto the machine. So that's what it actually is. These pipes here are 12mm diameter aluminium, and I've used the aluminium brazing rod to attach the aluminium pipes to the copper. Then if we pull out the plunger, there it is, 
You'll notice that the distance between the two plungers are the same as the centre of the distance of the two end pipes. Now this is the linkage that attaches it to the crankshaft. So when that moves, the crank is moving down, they move to that position. They connect this and this and exhaust this. And then when it moves back up, it moves to that position, connecting this and this, but exhausting this one. Now it has to move a fair distance, so it actually has to move something like that kind of distance. So just below midpoint of this, to popping out of the actual tube, and then when it moves back that way, it moves there. If you move it so it's just kind of like that kind of movement, where you've got hardly any movement, then you'll find your machine doesn't work. It needs to carry on a little bit to get over that top dead centre dead spot, and you do that just by making the travel that little bit longer. So as it travels a little bit longer, then it can actually get over that top dead centre point. So that's how you make the valve. The key point are the valve stoppers need to be the same distance apart and they need to entirely cover the port. So these are 16 millimeters and this is a 12 millimeter, although it's a 10 millimeter opening. So you get an extra three millimeters either side to cover that port and the travel distance has to be slightly longer than you would think. Now these are 20 mil plastic pipe because they fit beautifully inside 22 mil. So there's been no engineering there at all. They fit rather nicely and they slide up and down rather freely. Okay. Okay, so we did the bellows making in that previous video. They're just stuck on the bottom here with an inlet in the bottom. Then they go to this crankshaft, which has uh, one crank set at 180 degrees apart. So the two bellows are 180 degrees apart. So this is at the top, this one's at the bottom. This one is 90 degrees to this one. So when that one is here, this one is at the bottom. So it leads by 90 degrees. And once you set up the cranks like that, this one operates the valve, remember? And these operate the pistons in apposition. So when you set up the cranks like that with that, you have this thing up and running. Now obviously we did a little bit of breathing before, but I've got it attached to my vacuum cleaner. So let's turn the vacuum cleaner on and watch it run for a bit. That awesome! <laughs> There you go, a very cheap engine. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.